Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. So I think under $500 is a really solid budget for 9.8 comics. You can get a really awesome 9.8 for that price. And I think it's a, it's a doable budget too. Like, you know, if you're out there, you could probably save up a, an extra $500 over a month or two if you're, you know, really interested in kind of going after some of these 9.8 comics. Uh, so with that, I got a full list here and some honorable mentions as well. So yeah, quite a few ideas to get through. Uh, the first one up is uh, a bit overlooked, not, maybe not your obvious kind of big key issue, but I'm really liking this one at the price, absolutely. It's an uh, all-new Wolverine number one in a CGC 9.8, but I want to talk about the Marquez variant cover, which uh, I think out of the whole lot of uh, all-new Wolverine number ones, this is, this is the one I like the most for sure, in the Marquez variant cover. So in this uh, comic, X-23 becomes the new Wolverine for the first time. So it really makes sense to have this kind of homage cover, I think, where they swipe the original cameo of Wolverine from Incredible Hulk number 180 to kind of coincide with Laura Kinney becoming the new Wolverine. So I think that's a good idea. It makes sense. Uh, great eye appeal. I think X-23 is kind of looking badass as the new Wolverine on this cover. So yeah, we'll get into the price too. Just making sense sort of at the price and how cool this one is in my opinion. So uh, 76, 9.8, it's in the blue label, a 1 of 76, pretty fantastic. This is the 1 for 10 variant. There's a 1 for 25 variant as well, but I feel like the market kind of agrees with me that this 1 for 10 variant is kind of the one to get. I, f I find the prices are about the same, or this Marquez variant goes for more than the 1 for 25, so, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, this is kind of the most wanted one, I think, uh, even though it, it is a 1 for 10, it's not the most rare variant. 73.8% uh, is the 9.8 percentage, so of all graded copies, 73.8% of them are 9.8s, and that's kind of what you get with these variants. It's more about the 1 of 76, not too many of them out there. Uh, so a recent sale for 187.50. So, you know, given all those positives, how cool this one is, you know, under 200 at 187.50, I think it's just a great value. So this is under 200, not even under 500. This is one of the more affordable ones on the list. Uh, so, you know, the price range on this one is kind of from 150 to 250, 187.50 with that most recent sale. So uh, that most recent sale was myself, actually. Yeah, I did end up uh, getting a deal done. It was like two days ago for this one. Um, I, I purchased it from mycomicshop.com. Interesting, I, like I was watching this one for about two months now, and they had just switched to accepting offers on this one. It was like 275 on eBay like a flat buy it now for quite a long time. And on their website, it's a little bit less expensive because they take out the eBay fees. It was like 240. All of a sudden, uh, they started accepting an offer. So I thought I'd, I've, you know, I kind of wanted this one, but I wanted it sort of at the right price. So I thought 187.50 was kind of fair for everyone, but still a pretty good deal for me, I think. And uh, he accepted it. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And uh, it's just one to think about. Like a Wolverine key issue, you almost can't go wrong. This is probably one of the cooler modern Wolverine key issues and maybe like second or third in line for like the cool X-23 key issues like NYX number three absolutely you want that one if you're the biggest X-23 fan first appearance but of X-23 but um, I think this all-new Wolverine number one in the Marquez variant is uh, probably second or third in my opinion as a really cool X-23 key in the 9.8 all right next one here's uh, an Amazing Spider-Man 265 first appearance is Silver Sable I think this one's got some potential and it's still under $500, you know, anytime you can get kind of an amazing Spider-Man uh, key issue, uh, still under $500 and kind of a, an almost perfect 9.8 seems to be making sense. Uh, with Silver Sable, too, uh, Silver Sable, there were, uh, you know, it was kind of three, four years ago, there was supposed to be a silver and black like movie or show, which was going to be Black Cat and Silver Sable. That got canceled though. Um, but you know what? I think you could easily bring Silver Sable in on like a Tom Holland Spider-Man movie or something like, like that. And I think Silver Sable would, would look really badass on uh, the big screen. Uh, if not, just again, though, you can always enjoy these uh, Amazing Spider-Man key issues in, in an almost perfect grade. 712, 9.8s in the blue label. So it's a, yeah, it's a pretty well-known key issue. 26.7%, the 9.8 percentage. Recent sales prices in a 9.8, $405, $386. Saw one sell too. This was like a few months ago, getting back a bit, but one sold for $249.99. I think, you know, maybe if the centering's a bit off, there's a couple things that annoy you, 
maybe it, one would sell closer to that 250. But I think uh, good looking copies in the 9.8, the 410 and the uh, $386 prices were in auctions recently. So I think that's kind of a more of a recent price, maybe you know 300 to a, or 350 to a little bit over $400 if it's looking really awesome in a 9.8 is kind of a price target to aim for. Uh, so, you know, Amazing Spider-Man keys are pretty awesome. A few others that are under 500 to think about really quick. Amazing Spider-Man 258, where they find out like the black costume is a symbiote, that's like two, or that's like 450-ish. There was an auction that just recently ended for that one. So that's kind of getting up there, but not over 500 yet. Amazing Spider-Man 256, first appearance of Puma. That one's like 400, kind of 350 to 400. And Amazing Spider-Man 212, first appearance of Hydro Man. And uh, that one's kind of like 325, I believe, in the 9.8 in that area. So a few others under 500 to consider. Okay, next one here is a Detective Comics 27. The uh, Oreo Cookies giveaway reprint, though, for Detective Comics 27. So, uh, you know, Tech 27 is first appearance of Batman. Pretty much impossible to get if you're on any type of budget. Uh, so this Oreo Cookies reprint, as a Batman fan, I've kind of had my eye on this one, and I do want this one. I don't have it, but uh, it, it's a cool one. 503 9.8s in a blue label. 60% is the 9.8 percentage. I think the range on this one is like 200 to $300. You might get really lucky if an auction pops up. Maybe you get it under 200 uh, Interesting, too, there is an, an auction on eBay right now for this one. Um, I'm not going to bid on it because the shipping to Canada is, is not favorable for me, but... Uh, um, it, it, I think it has five days left or something like that. So you might want to check that out on eBay if you're seeing this video a little early. Hopefully that one goes under 200, but even for a real nice one, like I've saw this one kind of sell for sort of 225 to 250, uh, pretty recently. So if you're a Batman fan, this one's just cool. And, uh, like I was, uh, kind of, um, just, uh, curious looking on the census for the original Detective 27 from 1939, there's only 74 in all grades graded. So yeah, it's just impossible to get that one, certainly. So uh, uh, this one uh, makes sense if you're a Batman fan, I think. Okay, next one. This is one I do have, a Wolverine number eight. Yeah, you almost just can't go wrong with uh, Wolverine and Hulk on the same cover. Uh, this one for me, uh, you know, this is a book I'm really nostalgic for. I had a copy of this one growing up in the 90s, just a cover I remembered. So when I got into 9.8 Comics like three years ago, this was one I wanted to pick up, not really from an investment perspective at all. I was just you know, wanting this one for the nostalgia. Uh, it turned out it was a pretty awesome, like, investment grade book that's appreciating quite nicely. I, you know, three years ago, I grabbed mine for like 150, and a recent sale on one was for $455. One in an auction just sold in like the last day or two in a 9.8. So uh, 622, 9.8s for this one, a one of 622. Um, what is it here? 36.3% is the 9.8 percentage. And recent sale for $455. Maybe you can, you know, probably aim a little closer to $400. That seems like, I think it was like a, the uh, nice looking new labels on the CGC and everything. But uh, maybe a little closer to $400 is still doable for a Wolverine 8. But again, yeah, you almost can't go wrong. Wolverine and Hulk on the same cover is, is pretty much unbeatable. So, and, uh, you know, like a Hulk 340, a lot of those, you know, secondary sort of uh, 1980s, um, Wolverine and Hulk books are like over $1,000 in the 9.8. So this one's still under $500 um, is making sense, certainly if you're a Wolverine and Hulk fan. Okay, next one's an Uncanny X-Men number 244. First appearance of Jubilee. And, uh, you know, just to get kind of a big first appearance of a hero, uh, you know, a new X-Men, new aged X-Men, uh, I think is, is pretty cool. Although for me, like, I wish the cover was kind of a little more eye appealing on this one. And I think, you know, that's a bit of a negative. But uh, 921, 9 8s in the blue label. 26.9% is the 9.8 percentage. And recent sales, uh, kind of right around that 400 level, $410 and $425 uh, in a direct edition CGC 9.8. So, yeah, I kind of wish there was a better cover. I do think, you know, pretty big first appearance of a cool hero. It would probably be a little bit closer to Uncanny X-Men 266 if the cover was cool. But... Um, you know, maybe not the coolest cover, but still under 500. And I think there's some value there, you know, around $400. And, and you know, this one kind of, I would be, you know, picky on the centering and, you know, make sure you just get it perfectly centered down the spine and, uh, you know, get a great looking 9.8 uh, around 400, I think is making sense for uh, Uncanny X-Men 244. Next one I do have as well, Batman Adventures, Mad Love. 
Yeah, this one's a great one. And uh, kind of surprised that uh, maybe this one hasn't taken off a little bit more. I think uh, Batman Avengers 12 has done really well in the last uh, year or two. And I think there's still some room for Mad Love because it's a really tough one in a CGC 9.8 for a 1990s comic. And it's origin, uh, uh, Harley Quinn. Even better, like, you kind of get the Batman Adventures legends on this one. Uh, Paul Dini and Bruce Tim, Bruce Tim art, and then they're on the story, the two. Uh, whereas the first appearance of Harley Quinn is just, like, I'm not even sure who does the art or anything like that, but certainly Bruce Tim and Paul Dini are, like, the Batman Adventures legends, basically. So that's a, a benefit. Uh, 299.8, a so 1 of 290, tough black cover. 16.9% of all graded copies are 9.8s. That's fantastic for a 1990s comic. Usually in the 90s, it's like 40%, 50% of them are 9.8s, but this one, the lower the better. Only 16.9% of all graded copies are 9.8. So it's a rare one, a, a tough one in the 9.8. A recent sale, I saw one sell on Comic Link for $469. Looks like one on eBay kind of went for a little bit over 500. I still wanted to include it on the list because, yeah, for it being such a tough one in the 1990s, and um, I was sort of surprised to see Batman Harley Quinn in a 9.8, seeing some sales for that one around like $600. I feel like Mad Love should be about 600, you know, 600 to 700, let's call it, not 469. So it's a really good value, I think, to consider right now. Okay, last one of the main ones, and we'll uh, get through some honorable mentions a little quicker, hopefully. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 51. First appearance of Jenica on this one. I think uh, a, a cool one to consider under $500. And yeah, this one I believe, yeah, right around under $400, right around $300, a few of them going. Uh, it, so in a 9.8, uh, there's uh, 198 CGC 9.8s in the blue label, a one of 198. One of the benefits of this one, you know, it's an IDW book. It's not a Marvel or DC one that's going to be super heavily printed. Uh, you know, first appearance of Jenica, she's like a Foot Clan soldier in this one. A splinter kind of takes her under his wing. Eventually, she becomes the next Ninja Turtle in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 95. But this is her first overall appearance. I think, you know, if there's a Turtles movie, which there will be uh, in the next five or ten years or whatever it might be, you know, I think it would be really cool to just throw uh, Jenica in, you know, as the fifth Ninja Turtle, and I'm sure these books would do a lot better. 66.4%, uh, the 9.8 percentage. Recent price is $304 and $389. There's only 198 of these, so a one of 198. Um, you know, at times they're kind of tough to get, I think, closer to that $304, which I would think is a really good fair price, and then one going for $389. So that's kind of the range on this one right now. But first, Jenica, you know, um, I think, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one has been a really great comic book to invest in. And in the modern age, there's not too many, like, obvious Ninja Turtle keys, but I think this one is. And I think there's a lot of potential with, uh, you know, Jenica now being the fifth Ninja Turtle. And it's, you know, pop culture hasn't really caught on to that yet. But when they do, probably more upside for a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 51. And I have three of them in the 9.8. Yeah, I bought them when they were around $100, like, three years ago. Uh, okay, honorable mentions for under $500, 9.8s. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, number one, the Hamilton Comics uh, version of uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, number one. I've talked about this kind of off and on lately, and it's the first Power Rangers comic book. Uh, not too many of them in the 9.8. I think kind of a fair price is sort of $325 to $350 maybe in a 9.8. And uh, yeah, I think Power Rangers is a pretty big brand, and... You know, this one still kind of flies under the radar, still under 500. I think it's it's a cool one at the price. Certainly if you're a Power Rangers fan as well. Uh, Merc with a Mouth, number seven. First appearance of Lady Deadpool. Yeah, this one is, I think, bouncing right around $500. You know, maybe sort of 450 to 550 is the price range. So hopefully if you wanted this one, you get lucky, you get it under 500. But, um, you know, Deadpool's coming back to the MCU. Maybe uh, they they go with a, a Lady Deadpool in the movie and that would help out this book. But from all that I sort of did the research on it and everything, because I do have this one in a 9.8, it's pretty low printed. It's it's kind of a tough one to find. There's not a lot of 9.8s on the census. So yeah, I really like uh, Merc with a Mouth number seven, if you can get it under 500. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number one from 2008. This, uh, along with, uh, like I recently purchased Annihilation Conquest number six, that predates Guardians of the Galaxy number one, 2008. But basically, this is the first appearance of the new Guardians of the Galaxy team that we all know from 
uh, the MCU. So both of these are under 500. Annihilation Conquest 6 is 350. That's how much I'd purchase mine. That's kind of like the price, uh, about the fair price right now. Guardians of the Galaxy number one 2008 is a tough 9.8. The 9.8 ratio is really low for a modern book. Um, I think that one's sort of in the 400 to kind of, it might go over 500 occasionally, but I think you can still get that one under 500 as well. So if you're a Guardians fan, in the new school Guardians, those are the ones to get. I think they make a lot of sense. Uh, Swamp Thing number 50, the next one. The first kind of prototype of Justice League Dark. A really cool cover on this one. I think this one you can get under 300 bucks too. I'm watching one on uh, on eBay for for quite a long time and was pretty tempted. I'm pretty sure it's a best offer and I think the shipping's decent to Canada. So, um, you know, that one around sort of 250, I think is a great value. And Justice League Dark, if they come out, with, you know, with something along those lines, uh, I think there, there's more upside for that one, certainly. Uh, a, a bunch of Batman books. I was going to kind of put them on the main list, but I thought I'd just uh, kind of ring them off here on the honorable mentions. Uh, Batman 366 uh, in a 9.8. I saw this one recently sell like just under 300 bucks. It was like a month ago and I have two of these in a 9.8 and I kind of want a third one. I was almost ready to bid on that. It went for just under, it was like 296 or something like that, the final price. Batman 366, one to think about. Batman 404. That one's kind of right around 300, I believe, as well. Uh, year one, part one, that's a great one. I got a few of those in the 9.8, being, being a big Batman fan. <laughs> Batman 436, first appearance of Tim Drake. That one's under uh, 500, I think, in the sort of 300 to $400 range. And uh, Killing Joke in the 9.8. There's quite a lot of these out there, and the range on this one's kind of, you know, 225 to 325, I would say. There, there was one that just recently went where... I thought it was a great price. It went for like 222 bucks or something like that. That kind of surprised me because a lot of these were going around 300 uh, for Killing Joke. Uh, and last honorable mention here, Silver Surfer 44. First appearance of the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, this one had kind of sailed over 500. Um, there were quite a few auctions that were like 550-ish, 525 area about a year ago. Admittedly, the comic market was a lot hotter back then with you know kind of COVID heating everything up. Uh, things have cooled down a little bit more, and I recently saw an auction for a direct version in a 9.8 for $380. Yeah, Infinity Gauntlet has kind of been immortalized in those Avengers MCU movies, so I think just over time it's it's probably going to trend up. And, you know, I got two of them in a 9.8 and in the direct edition, and, you know, I purchased my, one was like 220 and another one was like 160 or something like that. So they are trending up uh, slowly but surely, and I think... Uh, Moving forward, uh, the first appearance of Infinity Gauntlet is going to be a cool one to have. All right, team, we'll leave it at that, though. Okay, uh, yeah, I think, you know, under $500 is just a great budget range, and there's a lot to think about in that budget range, but uh, certainly wanted to try and come up with uh, some of my favorites uh, under $500 in a 9.8. All right, team, hopefully you liked the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll uh, see you on the next one.